Soul Twin Audios. Stories created solely with the vintage soul in mind. O-T-R-T-S-T-A. What story can I connect you with today? I don't really need a story. I just wanted information. Very well. Tune your radio dial to anchor.fm slash soul twin audios. That's S O L E. Soul Twin Talk, a backstage pass into productions at Soul Twin Audios through guest interviews, commentaries, promos, and featuring your teasers and trailers. Soul Twin Talk is happy to announce that Soul Twin Audio celebrates its one-year anniversary today. I just want to thank everyone who has stuck with us throughout the whole year, listening to our programming like Old Time Radio Theater and our new programming, Patchwork Classics, hosted by the the amazing Sharon Grunewald. And I'm sure you've been listening to those over at um, the Mutual Audio Network. I've released... The Turn of the Screw, and Ring Once for Death. You also had the opportunity to hear Fugue and C Minor. And towards the end of this month, you'll get to hear Rope. And as the, uh, in the next week or so, I will be releasing The Turn of the Screw and Ring Once for Death for Soul Twin Audios. You'll be able to get to hear those on Anchor and also YouTube. And speaking of YouTube, we've nearly reached the goal of a hundred subscribers. I believe we have 83 now, and I just want to thank everyone who has subscribed so far. And again, if you have a YouTube channel and would like to subscribe, we would love to subscribe back to you. So for this week, I have been working on the brand, especially over on YouTube. I'm trying to fix the artwork a little bit to make it a little bit more appealing for folks. Uh, I've also worked on a new trailer that I've released to I've released the script over to the voice artists so we're going to put that together very soon and I'll have that uploaded on YouTube at Anchor along with some new artwork and I can't conclude this update without mentioning the brilliant Pat Carroll who recently passed away she was 95 years old many of you know her she was the voice of Ursula in the Disney movie The Little Mermaid she is I guess you could say that she was a minor inspiration for me. I'm always trying to describe my voice to people. And even though I'm not as deep as she is, or I'm not as deep as she was, um, I I like to think that my vocal tone is similar to hers. Anyway, I just wanted to pay tribute to her. So I'm going to um, actually sing a tiny snippet, not too much, because I don't want your ears to bleed and send you all running from Soul Twin Audios forever. But I'm just going to sing a little tiny bit from her classic, iconic song, Poor Unfortunate Souls. I admit that in the past I've been a nasty. They weren't kidding when they called me well a witch. But you'll find that nowadays I've mended all my ways, repented, seen the light, and made a switch. True? Yes. And I fortunately know a little magic. It's a talent that I always have possessed. And, dear lady, please don't laugh. I use it on behalf of the miserable, the lonely, and depressed. Pathetic. And that's all I'm going to do. I'm not going to do any more of that. I'm going to spare you guys my attempt at singing. Anyway, moving on. On the Vintage Video Podcast, we'll be reviewing every single wide release of the 1980s in chronological order. Over 250 episodes to enjoy and thousands more to come. John enters the store now to order another can of ether. I picture him outside like Homer with the gas yeah. hall. One for you, one for me. I also like to think about it, that the kids renew their vow not to talk about the murder. By, by murdering mur- someone. <laughs> They're taking a blood <laughs> oath with someone else's blood. This stuff is seven times more powerful than uranium. And yeah. they, they open up the vault that it's contained and not wearing any kind of protective nope. gear. Yeah. And it's wooden crates. Wooden crates. It's like the guys in Chernobyl picking up the graphite rocks yeah. and going, meh, because there's rocks. Hugging the elephant foot. <laughs> just like, oh, this thing's smooth. It's so warm. He turns to dial the number from the classified ad without even thinking about the numbers. <laughs> we know this because we can hear his thoughts and he's talking about how AJ was right that ninjas are misdirecting him. They're misdirecting 
I really wish that he'd turn to the front of man like, six, six, five, five. <laughs> Vintage Video. We're rewatching the 80s so you don't have to. Joining me today is James C. Taylor, the creator of My Amazing Woman. Anna, Kat, and Trevor are a normal married couple. Ta-da! Cake. You brought me cake. A sorry I made out with Madison, even though I didn't, cake. I'll take it back to the kitchen. Trevor? Yes? Leave the cake. Normal, except for this. During the day, I'm Anna Cat Walker. <clears throat> Wearing? Right. And at night, I am amazing woman. So you're serious. Trevor, I really am amazing woman. And I really have to go. <laughs> Holy crap! I married amazing woman! My amazing woman. Facing the missteps of marriage, the foibles of friends, and the voices of villainy. Protect it. I'm here to steal it. My Amazing Woman, your romantic superhero action comedy audio play on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Podbean, or almost anywhere else you get your podcasts. Hey, daddy -o. First of all, I want to thank you for having me on your show. And I also wish to wish Soul Twin Audios a happy anniversary. Well, we're delighted to have you on the show and thank you so much. What inspired you to create your podcast, My Amazing Woman? It's kind of a two-part thing. Number one, what inspired me to create a show was I, in my day job, listened to a lot of podcasts while I was working and they were almost always sports podcasts a few other general topic podcasts, but I did not know there were any audio fiction podcasts out there. And I said, you know, it would be nice if I could sit and just listen to a show while I was working. Uh, I listened to old time radio when I was a kid and I even did some old time radio when I first went to college and I was looking for something like that. Maybe not old school, but just radio drama that you could follow with your ears and you could still work while you were doing it. So since I didn't know that you and everybody else were out here, I said, you know what? I need to make this. Now, as to why My Amazing Woman is specifically what it is, I thought about the show's that I really enjoy watching on television or enjoyed past tense watching on television and three shows from my youth that I still even today watch. They're on my DVR right now. Episodes of them are bewitched Batman and Perry Mason. And so I had the thought, what if you took all those three and put them in a blender? And so that is why My Amazing Woman is what it is. And the other is why I went about creating it in the first place. I think we as a genre have a little bit of an issue in that we have difficulty getting found. As I said, I didn't know that anybody was doing any of this. And then after I started doing it, I find out that, found out there were tons of people out here doing it, such as yourself and the other uh, producers and shows that I've run into since I started doing it. And I think where we could stand some improvement as a community is figuring out how to get people to know that we exist. You definitely bring up an interesting point about the lack of visibility within the audio drama community. I think what we really need to do is to continue to network like we're doing right now and just keep helping each other and promoting each other because that's that's the only way that we're going to get noticed. What made you decide to present your series as an audio drama instead of a book series? Well, it never really occurred to me to make the show any sort of book or anything, partly because it is very difficult for me to write a book. I have done NaNoWriMo a few years, and I managed to complete NaNoWriMo, and I thought what I did was okay. But a book is a hard thing to do. I've always been oriented toward writing shorter things. I started out 
uh, at one point in radio, and I wrote radio commercials, and that's about as short as you can get, telling a story in 30 seconds. Uh, but from there, I was trying to, and got really close, trying to break into um, uh, script writing for movies and television. And like I said, I got really close. It's rather a fun story that I'll share with you personally at another point. But that was about my speed. I could write uh, a half hour pretty easily. I could write an hour pretty easily, especially when a half hour is 24 minutes and an hour is 46. Uh, but when you start even getting into full length movies, in order for me to do it the way that I want to do it, it takes a lot of planning and structure and you have to have an idea that lasts the whole way. And that's easier to do in 24 minutes than it is in 90 to 120. So, and if 120 was difficult for me, you can imagine how difficult it is to write an entire book. As I said, I've done it a couple times, uh, but it's very difficult. Plus, I just think I'm mentally oriented toward series and serials and things of that nature from, you know, watching the old time serials from the um, uh, 40s and whatnot and from reading comic books all the time and from watching television series all the time. My brain is just sort of series oriented, series focused. I envy you for finishing that NaNoWriMo challenge. I've tried in the past, but I never could stick with it. I've always wanted to write a book myself, but it's like you said, it's it's a real challenge because it's way more involved. For me, audio drama just tends to lend itself to the stories that I want to tell. And like you in the shorter form, can you tell us about some of the projects you've been involved with outside of writing your own series? Well, lately I've done some drop-in voice work for a few other people, uh, but primarily the audio drama stuff that I have done before this uh, was for an amateur production called Timewell Electronic Recording Productions. Ken Halloran, who plays Dr. Calculus on my show, and I have been friends for a while, and he and his friends did a number of fan-based things, uh, you know, Star Trek-related, other things like that, and I was a part of that. And when I came up with an idea for a superhero group several years ago, I went to them with that, and they produced that. Uh, it was called the I'm One Four, and that was, besides working with Ken on that, that was where I met the lovely and talented Nicole B. Harrell, who you also know, which is well, a very interesting coincidence. I didn't knew, know that you knew her until uh, she commented about being in something that you had done. Uh, but anyway, that's where I met her. And we had a lot of fun doing that. I also did some voice work on a Babylon 5 fan project. I don't remember the name of it now, but I did that with Tony Lunn, and that was a blast. Uh, but I didn't do a whole lot of it, no, period, just because I had a job. I was married at the time of a lot of what I'm telling you right now, and I was busy trying to save my doomed marriage. So um, my attention was really focused elsewhere, but I've had my toe in audio drama for years. Like I said, going all the way back to college, Tom Siegman, Ross Bagby, and I all participated in doing a modernization for the late 70s of The Shadow, and it had its issues because I was not even a tenth of the writer that I am now, but we did it, and we had fun, and I enjoyed doing it, and it's similar to radio in general in that once you get the bug, it never quite leaves you. So I imagine at some point uh, I'll be in the nursing home trying to gather together all of the um, uh, people to record a show from their uh, adjustable beds. 
That is really neat that you're starting to work with Nicole. And actually, because of you, that's how she found me again to audition for other things. So thank you for that. What advice do you have for voice artists just starting out in the audio drama community? First of all, spend money. And I know that a lot of you don't have a lot of money, and I have had not a lot of money in my life, so I understand that, and I can relate to that. But spend some money. Don't don't record on your phone. Get a mic. Get a computer. Do that. Now, you can get a used laptop for relatively cheap and i say relatively because i know that when you have no money two hundred dollars is a lot of money but you can get a laptop or even a desktop for relatively cheap you can get a decent microphone for under a hundred dollars do that so that when your stuff has to be put up next to people that have been doing this for years have their own home studios or using uh, a mic of better quality than the mics I used to use when I was in radio, you don't sound like you don't belong. So spend some money. That said, don't go crazy. You don't have to, when you first start, build yourself an isolation booth with all of the sand, sound paneling and all of that other stuff. If you tr treat your room properly, and there are tons of uh, articles and websites and so forth that will talk to you about how to set your room up for recording. You can do that relatively cheaply and easily. And that will take care of that. So just you want the audio quality of what you do to be of a professional quality, even if you're not at the level where you can pay for the stuff that makes all of that easier. The next thing that you want to do is you want to watch a lot of different actors or listen to a lot of different actors. And I don't mean consume the entertainment. You want to go into it analytically and figure out how they're doing what they're doing, why they are doing what they're doing. You know, find exercises like say this sentence six different ways so that it carries different meanings. And, and yes, I, six is just an arbitrary number I pull out of my head. But yes, you can say the same sentence in different ways that it carries different meanings. You can say the same sentence in different ways and it carries different meanings. Like what I did there. Anyway, um, that's another thing. And the lastly thing that I want to put out there, and I put this out there in a post on Audio Drama Hub at one point. Uh, listen to what you submit before you submit it. You want to make sure, you know, I mean, most producers, and this includes me, do, do not want processed audio. But they do want you to not pop your peas. They do want you to cut out any known glitches. So listen to you back to your audio before you submit it and just make sure that it represents you as a professional, even if you're not getting paid. Always perform like you're a professional, even if you're not getting paid. So those are the things that I would advise, and hopefully uh, you find that helpful advice. And again, thank you very much for having me. Those are all wonderful tips, and thank you for sharing them. And thank you for being with us here today. Discover the secret of St. Kilda. Come smell the heather and sit by the fire. Come talk and laugh with a community of like-minded souls seeking salvation. Come walk the rugged cliffs listening to the screams of seabirds. Listen to the screams of something else far beneath. The Secret of St. Kilda, with voice talent from The Magnus Archives, The No Sleep Podcast, and The Amelia Project. Find us everywhere at The Kilda. 
Hope we don't find you first. And now for our featured voice artist, Evelyn McCauley. We are becoming extinct. I'm looking for alternatives. We are all friends here, of course. And if it doesn't work out, we can always eat them. As interplanetary communications and collaboration came to a halt, humanity fell into a technological dark ages that lasted for many centuries, known as the Great Sundering. Peace and prosperity were but a distant memory, and chaos overtook the cosmos. The universe, any physicist can tell you, is ruled by chaos and decay. Stars explode, meteors crash, Oceans surge, forests burn, species perish. But humans want none of it. Human civilization depends on a vast repository of accumulated knowledge, passed down through the generations on papyrus, parchment, paper, photographs, PDFs. What will become of it? Orientation complete. Assignment complete. Alignment complete. You have a sun in Gemini. You have a moon in Sagittarius. And your ascendant is in Aries. Grief surrounded the camp. From that point forward, no matter how hard anyone tried to ignore it or to overlook the pain, loss is not something easily ignored. If the trees feel your pain and lash out at the earth on your behalf, and there is nothing you can offer to compensate for the feeling. Once upon a time, there was an ocean. The smuggler, I've heard about you. You're a long way from home again, Miss Grey. You are charged with treason against the pirate code. I've had enough of this. Throw her overboard! Not until I've seen the captain. Sickness, sickness! Exactly. He has a sickness. Only Payne's kiss can save him now. We must be wary of sea magics. <laughs> Tales of fishwives. Press on. We could just leave. That's always an option. Journey you must to the stupid woods. Oh, hello there. Yes, I am Stuart. The name's Reggie. It is what it is, Kane. A new bunny queen. The trio began paddling in the direction of Wild Hollow. Artemis! Here we go then. The Chronicles of Wild Hollow, The Grey Trilogy. Streaming now wherever you get your podcasts. Set sail on a brand new adventure. And now, our featured audio drama review. The story you are about to hear is untrue. H.G. Wells, this is Mr. George Orwell, he's a... Dreadful, big-footed, Trotskyist hack. When two of speculative fiction's greatest writers accidentally double-book a getaway cottage... What's he doing here? An argument about tea... There are eleven rules to making a nice cup of tea... Are you the tea police now? ...escalates into an eon-spanning adventure... This is a very special bicycle, Orwell. Of time travel? What year is it? And political machination. A surprise, landslide victory for the totalitarian Ingsoc party. Classic science fiction authors. Margaret Atwood. Meet Ray Bradbury. Holy Martian Chronicles. In their own worlds. Star. God, please. Warlocks. We won't eat you. You've got your fingers crossed behind your back. Isaac Asimov. Robert Akul. Find Untrue Stories wherever you find podcasts. What led me to want to listen to this one was the concept, the pairing of Orson Welles with George Orwell. And I also enjoy time travel stories, so this was just kind of a given. This was very well written, and it was so funny. I enjoyed the banter between the two main characters, and and I'm also interested to see where the author takes it next. I suspect that this is the kind of series that you need to listen to at least three episodes to really get the full effect of it. 
Robin, thank you for sharing untrue stories with us today. Listeners, you can find untrue stories at podcasts such as Spotify and Apple. I will also include some links for you to find it in the show notes. This concludes our episode of Soul Twin Talk. I look forward to talking with you again next week. Be safe, be happy, and always remember, I can do anything. I can reach any goal today. I can do what I want. I can be what I want to be. You've been listening to Episode 7 of Soul Twin Talk. I'm your host, Rachel Polium, and I'd like to thank my guest, James C. Taylor, for being with us here today, along with the production companies who sent me a promo. Vintage Video Podcast, The Secrets of St. Kilda Podcast, Shouting is Funny for sending me their trailer, The Chronicles of Wild Hollow, and Robin Johnson's Untrue Stories. Special thanks to Evelyn McCauley for sharing her demo with us. The themes for Soul Twin Audios and Soul Twin Talk were composed by Ross Bernhardt, with incidental music by Storyblocks. 